So just to look at the inclusivity for a moment, a lot of people think they understand worthwhile having a read. Next slide, please. So whilst many of us have been impacted upon by the lockdown way back in March, the first one, we've sort of been fortunate, my colleague sort of in the right-hand photograph, and we've been engaged working on another project, Topmark part there, Caremark, um, to care in the community organisation. We provided cargo bikes training for them to work and deliver the various things to the community. I just thought that was a funny one that the COVID sign is right across the cycle path. And one of the other things we did working in lockdown is looking across all of the cycle routes, checking them, because clearly there's been an uplift in cycling. Next slide. As we're about inclusivity, this is just one example of one of the projects that we do. That's working with children, not in education, employment, training. And that's within a specific school for children who have perhaps been excluded from their current school. And it's a project that's underway now and has had a great deal of uh, success. Active communities, working with a whole range of people, perhaps not so fortunate, may not have access to cycles. Also have, number, also have a number of specialty schools across our borough. Many of the instructors perhaps listening in now, adult and families project over the summer. We're on holiday cycling courses. And this transition, a relatively new project, but that's for where year seven move into their first year of secondary school. And we do things around route planning. And interestingly, the significant number of the children engaged in that were children with special needs, not on the spectrum, autism, uh, perhaps mobility issues, auditory, visual, information processing. And the other one, business links. So primarily adults, people who perhaps don't have the confidence to cycle into work. And we've got a say 75 schools, and that's just around the primary sec sector. So next slide. Just allow participants to read through that. And one of the little outcomes for the children, I say children because some of the young adults as well, is potentially at the end of it, they obtain a bike. So that opens up some opportunities for them. So just an example of inclusivity. Next slide. So I just invite you to read that. We may come back to that a little later in the presentation. Just how we view the world. Perhaps. Next slide. So a little bit of work for the participants now. So if you'd like to answer into the chat, just in case anybody's got any visual uh, issues, why is the word listen like Christmas? And I'm just going to give you approximately the maximum score on a dartboard in seconds to assess that. So, just an opportunity to apologise for the little glitches, despite a full run through over the last few days. We appear to just had a last minute glitch on links, but so why is the word listen like Christmas? So any of my panel members who are listening in, have we got any responses yet? Uh, nothing yet on the Q&A or the, the chat. So 
So I'll help some of them. The clue is in the left-hand one. Listen. Coming towards Christmas. So the word listen can be converted by rearranging the letters into silent. And silent night. The word listen and silent by changing the words can be put into tinsel. Obviously tinsel associated with Christmas. Some will be purchasing many bikes, I'm sure, over the Christmas period. So just examples of how we think, and perhaps just looking to looking at patterns. So I'm just going to move to the next slide. So we opened up a little while ago about listening. Now it's about listening and thinking. So if we're really listening, what is the next letter in the sequence? And for the numeric, what are the next two numbers in the sequence? So one zero, one one, one two, and what are the next two? We well, could be a pattern of numbers. And some of you may be looking at this, looking for a pattern, looking for some logic. If anybody's having any issues with the chat function, um, feel free to use the Q&A instead to put your suggestions in. So the question was, what is the next letter in the sequence? And what are the next two numbers in the sequence of 10, 11, 12? And if I say it slower, perhaps it will. What is the next letter in the... And if you reveal the next slide, please. Yep, letter we S. have had some people put S in, so... Well yeah, done. Well Excellent. done to all of you. Well done. Did we get many people put one and two in? We had a lot of 13s. Yeah, 13s, <laughs> most common. Because, again, we're just looking for pattern. And when, when we learn and acquire information, we're often looking for a process. And the point there is not everybody thinks or processes information in the same way. And about being inclusive is clearly being aware of that. So I'm going to go to the next slide. And hopefully just a, a little exercise now. Uh, for those who are sitting down, you could stand up. I'm going to. Fold your arms. That's a fairly simple task. Now fold your arms the other way, opposite to what you normally would do. You can sit back down, by the way, now, if you want to. I thought that pictures there are appropriate. NHS have done a fantastic job. Anybody looking at the top slide there? Slick win, new skills backwards just sometimes processing. So that fold in the arms, if you think, if you were signing with your dominant hand, think how would it be to sign with your non-dominant hand or to do something with your non-dominant hand, kick a ball, etc., with different feet. But anyway, on to the next slide. And the main theme clearly of this presentation to fellow instructors is around inclusivity. It's really about an example of this is Josh and his family that would like you to meet. And this presentation is based very much around his journey. Let's give you a few moments to read through that slide. to the next slide so I sat down met with the family explained what was available to them from a local authority perspective so local council the level one courses the level two courses the holiday courses uh, bike ability learning try that there's a whole range out there given the level of his need and his learning difficulties as well as coordination, devised a programme of real 
activations are called ABCs. You can see on there, awareness and balance and cycle. So it's a real basic steps. For those online, listening, we, if we talk about pedal ready, instantly the vast majority of people will know what that is. If we say brake, front wheel, back wheel, saddle, handlebars, these are things that, but for some who have no concept of how to cycle or even understand, it presents a great challenge. Just go to the next slide. This was the level of my IT skills, um, is the duck on a bike. And what I need to do with Josh and this with many, many other people as well, is for them to visualize what it is we're trying to achieve, what they're trying to achieve. So a little bit of fun, you'll see later is, is great interest in Disney and films and characters. So this became something that clearly engaged him and motivated him. So it was important to be able to, to see that. You can obviously see the duck is wearing helmet. That presented a challenge for him. So obviously in itself, a new point for some. So I'm going to the next slide. So had several discussions with people in the special education needs network. I may have mentioned earlier, I work as a cover teacher at a local academy, it's a secondary school, and have worked with many children for a range of behavioral and learning issues. So I've tried to design a program that would be specific to Josh's needs, really. And yes, could have given him a level one booklet um, sent him some videos. It was a case of try to unpackage and how he would engage with a learning process. And you can see there whether it's games, stories, pictures. That was the methodology. Keyword there was repetition. He's doing the same again and again and again. Um, some people, not all, but people with certain difficulties in how difficult we change. I mean, just reminds me of a quick story. I was running a course and people did their introductions at the outset. And I knew uh, one of the parents uh, attending the course was, had a child with special needs, told us that at the start of the week and we're about Wednesday and she was late, rung me. So I got up this morning, thought it was Tuesday, it was Wednesday. I did him cheese sandwiches. It should have been ham sandwiches. This was fundamental. Um, to the, the process. So she said, I had to go back home, rewind and completely restart the day again for him. And that type of thing is really important. It's a little like if you say you're going to do something and be somewhere and deliver something to somebody, whether that's voluntary or otherwise, it's important to stick to the plan. Anyway, hopefully the point made there. So next slide. Above all, the most important thing is remember, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, and again, you'll find many children with certain um, conditions, as I would say, but will say, have I got to do that? No, you don't have to, but if we get to that, it could be really, really good fun. Um, good balance, though. But that's the important thing is above all, again, to come back to a lot of people who've got challenges in life, if it's doing something, that's like a chore when it's maths, English, homework. Uh, I've got to do certain things. With, I've got to tidy my room, that chores. I always, always want to make sure and remember that it's fun. It's supposed to be really, really good fun. So next slide. And this was really important. Yeah, nickname I got was Duracell Bunny. You just take my batteries out. That's why I have to slow down and realise that everybody wants to go at the same pace. And this is the very, very early stages with Josh. One of the th things was about the appropriate bike. The originally, it was going to be a bike with stabilisers. I dissuaded the parents from purchasing one with stabilisers because of my experience that teaching children how to cycle without stabilisers becomes a challenge in itself and an appropriate bike. But I 
I'm sure there's many out there who'll know lots and lots about the different aspects of bikes. So about motivation, about energy, about drive and determination. Next slide. I'm just inviting the audience to take a few moments just to read through that. We come down to the last two points on the slide, understanding their motivation. That could be the motivation of the individual, the motivation of the parents, the carers. Intrinsic, effectively internal, extrinsic, external. Some people are motivated by different things. Reward system is a classic one. Any school I work in, well, I often say, when does the training start? The training starts as soon as you as soon as I'm allocated that school. Where is it? What's the values of the school? What's the systems and roads are like it around there? What's the reward system within there? What's the ethos of the school? What's their last Ofsted inspection like? Those are things that I would just, not, I'm not saying everybody should be doing these things, but those are the type of detail. Like this lad was in mainstream school, Josh, um, local to us, uh, having got one-to-one teachers and support, um, care plan. So quite complex issues, but no less presented a challenge for, for him and for, for many around him as well. So I'm going to the next slide. The planning and prep everything. And that was a question. How long will it take? In fairness, the parents, when asking that, will... How long is a piece of string? Often I hear people say, well, a piece of string is twice half its length. Depends how much time you've got, depends on their progress. But the one thing that's important is repetition, consistency, patience, and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. So on this point, when I sort of met the family, just that cycling action and the use of a bike, where and how, were all, all big, big challenges right at the outset. And I think the opening moments, I was on my back, showing them pedal action and enjoying them on the ground, doing that pedal action. So I thought we'd built a, a rapport quite early on and a bit of comp, a bit of trust. Next slide. And Josh can talk. I think I can talk a lot, but he can talk for England definitely. Continual dialogue. I can't do it, it's too hard. My legs hurt, my bum hurts, I don't know, I can't. Frustration and annoyed with himself, but just see through that and constant response as well. You can't do it yet. I'd invite some of the people who, hey, remember those early years of learning to cycle, learning to drive a car, learning to play, a game, whatever it is, things take time and for other people and some people it takes a lot of time. Next slide. And I'm going to allow you to read it, but one thing I often say to him, I put myself in your shoes, Josh. I want to understand what it's like from your perspective. Again, the last two points in that slide is not to prejudge. Conversations, I mean, only the other day with a, an instructor was around, they can't signal. One, maybe because of confidence to take their hands off of the handlebars. But the other one was one had only got one arm. Happens to be his right. Therefore, he's limited by which he can signal. Other ways to get over that, and I carry a indicator, which is just attached to the back or a rucksack, and it can be operated from the wrist. 
So to just want to overcome these things. There's often ways around it. And I'm very keen on this terminology. You hear, hear this just in life generally. I'm not very good at maths. So we, my colleague and I were delivering some training in connection with um, COVID awareness. So we've, we've been training regularly in schools and at safe distances. And just said to a fellow instructor, well, so approximately two metres. I don't know what two metres is. It's, I don't do maths. You know, the average bike length is 1.7 metres, depending on your bike. Add a little bit more and you've got two metres, two and a half paces, just having simple steps. And one of the things I was trying to do from Josh's percep perception was to create stepping stones, not stumbling blocks, seeing opportunities that we could go forward on. So next slide. Right in the centre of that slide, discuss needs, fears, worries. We, you saw it on, I may fall off. He didn't like dogs. He wasn't scared of dogs, but because of the speed of movement, his vision, his peripheral vision isn't very good. Uh, the glasses are quite a high uh, prescription. So if he gets offset, you know, outside of his normal, he got a bit concerned. So... One of the things is, I don't dislike dogs, but use the same training route regularly. Uh, knew his route to school and back from it and got to speak to people along the way. So like one of the ladies there, and she's regularly walking, Margaret, must be 80 years of age, a dog's named Luna. Another gentleman, his dog's named Dumbledore. So we're able to talk about Harry Potter. So it was using opportunities of all the time. Yes, the cycling and trying to get Josh cycling was important, but it was about what was going on. Distraction was a very big thing. For, uh, not him being distracted, but me to be able to distract him to keep progressing and not thinking about cycling. Uh, and I put another one in there about rain. Some children, especially if they've got certain conditions, rain they're hypersensitive to and something just to be aware of, forecast, uh, things of that, too much noise. Um, quite an interesting uh, there is a debate we're all on the spectrum but it depends where and we're affected by different things right at the bottom should recognise that out of the bikeability delivery guide systematic routines really important generally the same time if there was any variation notified in advance making sure the area was and clear. You tend to see the same people at the same time walking the dogs. Or, so we uh, built a, quite a rapport with a lot of people locally. Next slide. Need to be creative. I mean, one of the things in the early stages is the pedal action was very difficult for him to do. I can't do this. So exercises at home, like walking up and down the stairs, um, his parents purchased him a exercise bike so little targets of how many revolutions he could do uh, from the discussion with him I knew what his favourite films were so often it would be oh, what film have you seen oh oh I like that one and Rumple Silt Skin and oh, there was Tangled there was a whole load of films it certainly opens up your knowledge of children again and one of the things and in fairness this was to his his dad did this while we were out trying to get him to pedal. And his no doubt favourite film was Frozen. Frozen 1. I know it's Frozen 2, I don't know. It? So Anna and Elsa became pedals. And Anna was right and Elsa was left. And the only thing with that, the letter L was the left pedal. So oh, Anna, Elsa, Anna, Elsa, Anna, Elsa. And that, I, I would say it, it occurred instantly, but it, it did have a significant change in him um, doing that so come back to the exercise bike exercises up and down the stairs lying on the back and doing the pedaling action so next slide and it was a constant constant looking at creative 
if you got bored with anything, change that. Didn't like doing something, we, we changed that, but there was always a, a similar routine. We'd pull any of those out at, at sort of random, but photos, taking photographs, printing them, and then him sequencing them of what, so from a bike, on the bike, pedal ready, revolutions. He would then resequence the photographs. Point system reward, you'll see an example of that later on. Lots of visual aids. Dry whiteboard, one of my favorite things to have. Chalk, cones, fantastic the cones, except for when the dogs pick it up and run away with it, but they create some amusement. Stories. And for a number of children who, who uh, converse in Makaton and sign language because of their um, uh, auditory or verbal ability. Acronyms, been known to be the ac king of acronyms. You know, like the ABC, which we saw at the outset. So next slide. Just some examples of where adapted the resource to the needs of the learner. Many all recognize some of them head, shoulders, knees and toes. You can do this while cycling. Check on the skill level, confidence, ability. CBC and be safe. Like mantras, making sure that we continually could be about positioning, positioning. Lines from Frozen. Um, I used to sing, and he, Josh would say to me, Malcolm, you can't sing. I said, I know, but hey, it's a bit of fun. Um, role play. Um, to setting little targets of like, okay, I want you to, we're still not pedaling. You know, one, two, and glide. One, two, three, and glide. What's your favourite animal? It's perhaps it's a kangaroo, perhaps it's a rabbit. I want you to do big steps like a rabbit all the time, trying to just use different techniques. Flashcards. Anybody who's their referees, you know, you could use red and yellow cards or use those in schools. Introduce a green card within that. Olympic achievements. You know, what, what are we going for today, Josh? And the winner is in just little games all the time. So need to be adaptable. And this is a good example if we look at, you know, it should be rider led effectively. You know, getting to their level of achievement and building on that. Next slide. And I'm hopeful you now have resources in action, stop, start, continue. I've talked about the cones. <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah, whoa. So next slide. And just pause on that. I mean, I'm glad we got the audio for that. Clearly enjoying it. Engaged. Still wasn't pedaling. He's still gliding. But he's comfortable with his bike. He's comfortable in the company and we've got something to build on so sometime later so typically his father always um came out with the lessons and then one of the days he's working away he said no no problem still do the lesson uh, session we'll same place same time same back channel And we'll just go to, we did get him to level one outcomes, as you can see in there, which was fantastic achievement at his local school, which is one of, the, one of their goals, really. So we're now hopefully going to see another piece of video. Go, Josh, go, Josh, go, Josh. Keep pedaling to mommy. Go. Keep pedaling, that's really good. Really
always a risk when you've captured some video or captured some shots because it clearly couldn't be planned. That was the very first time he pedaled independently. It was the 23rd of April, St. George's Day, 2019. And I know uh, Claire, his wife, immediately sent that to his dad. And there was a, a, quite a bit of celebration within the family, his grandparents, his aunt, his uncles. And it was a, you know, just a, an incredibly <laughs> special moment for him. Uh, and for, you can, I think you see me, it's like I'm celebrating a goal. I think the man walking his dog, I'm not sure where that's Dumbledore, uh, probably looking at me thinking, what's he on? You see a cyclist in the background, so. Great, on to the next slide. And that's what I've just recapped on really. So same year, uh, I'd been away. I know where I've been because I've been to my daughter's wedding in Australia. Um, but one of the things I did encourage with the family is if ever I'm not available, continue to do the same things. And in fairness to them, they did. And one of the things there, the stories in the early stages, and when I say the early stages, the early months, every session was always a story before we started. This is what we're going to do today. We had a reading together. We discussed what we were going to achieve. And at the end, recap on that and build that up into his own sort of story. It looked like a story board, really, but, you know, addition, added to it with pictures and things of that nature. So next slide. So I think you may have seen there. I suppose the ultimate outcome is definitely in a level two environment. His parents are ahead of him. I'm obviously at the tail. And that would, how we got to that stage, the bikeability project with families and things, I introduced another instructor and his progression and he continues to progress. And I'm now looking at the quotes from Josh's family. Other things that I did with Josh at the, at the request of his parents and of agreement by the school, I visited him in school, in his class with his one-to-one. -one looked at his learning setup and one of the things that struck me that is around focusing on what can be done what not what can't be done and allowing them to expand to their capability and then bold there i think certainly richard his father would say that what seems a small step has been a massive, massive step for Josh because of his confidence, his conversation, uh, his speech, uh, his interaction with others. And he's now, in, he's now at a secondary school. Albeit one-to-one -one support, but continues to progress. So I'm just going to go to... Is it the end or just the beginning? Had his parents not had the desire for Josh to cycle, and I know uh, Richard would say this, he said, you tend to focus on the re reading, uh, literacy, all of that, and park cycling at the back. Uh, it was a really, really important skill for him to acquire and has broadened his horizons immensely. And one thing from a, a cycling perspective, and and I've mentioned, I've tried this with many, many, many other people. It does change their lives. There's no doubt whatsoever. It absolutely changes their life dramatically. And the family for that matter. So perhaps it's just the beginning of the next part of Josh's journey. 
just looking at perhaps drawing some key points out of the inclusive part of the biker deliver bikeability delivery guide you'll know there's a section of inclusive delivery at, in every section whether it's level one level two level three just highlight some key ones there you know embracing embracing riders of all abilities prepare to put, take positive risk taking Help them choose. And highlighted there should be. I mean, communicating verbally, I'll jump back at verbally and non verbally. Sign, dry whiteboard, flashcards. Watch me demonstrate. Doesn't always have to be about conversation. And I'm just going to move on to the next slide. There are eight fashion blocks there, really, for children, adults for that matter, with perhaps who are anxious may have mental health issues, may have learn, learning difficulties. I have a quote from a, a local chair of the mental health group uh, who says, cycling, perhaps running, walking, gardening should be including everybody's health plan. It should be an absolute prerequisite because these are the things that it does. Support. Move to the next slide. For those who are still with us, right at the outset, opportunity is nowhere. It's about how we view the world. That's an outcome that they certainly weren't expecting. And Richard said <laughs> a while ago, beyond my wildest dreams, we go and cycle on the road. Yes, I thought we'd go and do things, but just put the bike in the car and go to a park. And have a bit of a scoot about but to cycle there and even uh even the cone still in the picture that was at covid as well but obviously they're a, a bubble so social distancing not applicable to them and time is over to you and perhaps you want to consider how you deliver training and is it inclusive so take a little break now. Thank you for that, Malcolm. Um, and yeah, there's a couple more slides from Malcolm, but just to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, how you might implement it. And then thank you for people who have put their questions into the Q&A already. We'll come to those shortly. Again, if you're having any problems accessing the chat function, um, just use the Q&A instead to uh, put, put these answers in. So thanks. We've had Scott Weddle who said that he would like to do more in-depth planning with the parent and picking more familiar locations. Um, so that's great. That's really, really glad that that was helpful for you. Um, and if there's anything you want to expand on in response to this, Malcolm, please do. Yeah, I think, you know, it was a journey for me. I, yes, worked in a school, had some awareness of children and people with special needs. Um, but one of the things of actually de dealing with on a one-to-one -one basis, I spent a lot of time researching, speaking to organisations like the National Autistic Society, researching what they was available. There's a massive amount of re resource out there. Yes, there's about time. But I think if you, one thing I'll pick about is that familiarity of the training space is critically important. I'll give you an example where another, another lad named Mikey, which, you know, time perhaps in the future we'll look at, is a, a lad with autism, got him cycling quite, 
quite quickly, chuck into um, a cycle track to open area in another park there. Got him cycling and within minutes, he dropped the bike and ran off into the distance. And what I learned is because we'd been working on that road that you've seen, or the lane that you've seen with Josh in, closed view, overstimulated, too much information. So play area, I want to go. And it was an incredibly massive learning experience for me personally, uh, as well as his parents. Uh, so we just went back to a familiar training location and don't underestimate uh, how important that can be. You know, sometimes I say with the instructors, you know, wh why are we going here? Because we always go here. Well, why don't we go somewhere else? Because it's taking us nine minutes to get there, nine minutes to get back. By the time you've done a bit of both, you're halfway through your session. Look for something that's okay. How can we use this? And then, Thanks, Malcolm. Yeah. And hope, hopefully that's helpful for everybody. Um, we haven't got any more into the Q&A, but hopefully this is something that you can take away and think about in a little bit more detail. Um, as I said at the start, this recording will be available. And for those of you who've had some problems with the sound, we will edit the sound um, in the recording and put it on the website so you'll be able to hear a bit more clearly if there's anything that you've not managed to pick up today um, but this hopefully will be a useful resource for you going forwards um, so Malcolm I'm just going to go on to the next slide now about the useful links and organizations yeah, yeah. and there is many there is many uh, I mean I recently did a charity cycle ride for it's pronounced Bidget B E H. CH, I think ETS, a very rare condition. And one of the fellow instructors said, are we riding for this? That's not on the list, incidentally. But there's masses and masses of charities out there. Uh, and these are just an opportunity. And that link will take you into uh, the good practice guide, uh, whether it's adapted bikes, um, things of the, that nature. And certainly in the mind scope, autistic and the SMD strategy I've highlighted there, very, very useful uh, and a whole host of resource and information. Great. And again, um, we'll share these links afterwards um, for those that can find that useful. Um, so I'm going to stop this presentation final, yeah. now. Final slide and say thank yeah. you for those who've listened in today contributions thank you so now we're going to go to the Q&A we have got some questions already um, I'm going to invite Patrick and Benjamin to join us now who work for the trust and um, so together with Malcolm the three of them will be able to answer these questions if the three of you are able to put your video on um, I think that would be really nice for everybody to see your faces Trying to right now, Jess. Uh, yeah, um, if you disable, if you enable the video for us, uh, yeah, Jess. Good. Yeah. Great. So I can see myself. Hopefully, everyone else can, can see everyone. me. So if we start, um, take Julie's question that you asked um, a little while ago. Um, to, to start with, and then Patrick, I'll hand over to you with the more specific ones for, for Malcolm. So, uh, Julie, you asked that you've been, or you mentioned that you've been approached by a special school to deliver to 16 to 25 year olds um, uh, to deliver bike ability to them, or, or which bike ability program would you, would you access for this? Uh, can you be flexible with ratios, course timings uh, to meet the young people's needs? And um, I think the first the first point is, 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 is what 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 are the particular needs? Is it uh, do you need to learn to ride a bicycle first or are you, um, or a cycle rather than bicycle, um, or are you looking to do sort of level one, level two training? So it's, it's assessing assessing their needs and um, any module of Bikeability Plus and the core Bikeability um, is, is designed to be as inclusive as possible. And you've got all the inclusive notes on um uh, in the delivery guide as well, which Malcolm has, has alluded to. Um, you can be, of course, you can be flexible with the uh, ratios and the timings. Um, there's some guidance on that on page 12 of the delivery guide. Um, 
to, to give some 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 additional sort of uh, uh, yeah guidance around what what's the sort of minimum acceptable and uh, maximum acceptable ratios and and the minimum acceptable times. But I think the key point for me is is, is minimum. Um, and as, as as hopefully Malcolm's presentation had. Um, uh, put the point across that actually a, a, often a lot more timing is needed and that then then I guess we go straight into the question of, of funding and, and paying for it and uh, I know just a couple of the other questions um, allude to this as, as well um, currently the per head funding for each of the for the core um, modules and and the plus modules is, is, is set um, and, and and you've got your grants for those Um and uh, and and they are set for for for, for any any rider um but what we are looking to what we are are going to do um and encourage each each one of you to look in to keep an eye on in newsletter for this is uh, to uh, release um uh, a tranche of money uh, open for bidding for training providers uh, through our innovation fund um so this will be made available at the end of november uh, for training providers to um pilot projects um, which um, have a focus on inclusivity and SEND um, uh, and, and within the bike, uh, encourage everyone within the Bikeability for All se seminars as well to engage there uh, and talk to talk to the team uh, about what, what exactly you need uh, to to make your, your, your delivery um, completely inclusive because we are in uh, absolutely in, in listening phase and want to learn uh, as much as we can from 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 what's going on um, on the ground uh, so that we can uh, improve uh, whether that's uh, funding levels or practical practically. So uh, very much open to any feedback anyone has got uh, through the bike community for all um, and through the innovation fund um, to make sure that we are being as inclusive as possible. So hopefully that, that, that answers that, that question. Um, Patrick, do you want to take the other ones with, um, uh, with Malcolm? Yep, of course. Um, Malcolm, are you still there? Can you hear us? Okay. Yes. Yes, I can. Can't, can't put your camera on, can you, yep. Malcolm? Maybe. Okay, so we've got a question from John Wan, um, and it's a question about experience of trying to deliver to small group sessions. Um, what's your experience in that respect and thoughts in terms of all of the, the um, material you've just talked through, Malcolm? Have you got experience on that front? Malcolm, you're just on mute. I can't there. hear Malcolm at all. Unmute. Try that again. Any better? There we go. Okay, so so that experience crops up many times. Our average class size twenty five to thirty, split into two groups. Often we'll have a number within that group who are less experienced, may have special needs, and then we'll we'll peel that group off to work with an instructor or an instructor and a TA. And my experience is with small little targets that can actually be achieved uh, they may not be ready for level two perhaps the day after or during that week but what we would then do is encourage the ta and the school to continue those little drills with those children so like pass on the knowledge and the skill uh, to actually get them sort of ready for it on a smaller group and it works really really well i i certainly find uh, i mentioned within the presentation an active communities project which happened to be of a weekend, we did that very successfully with a range of uh, autistic cerebral palsy, dyspraxia, uh, of up to about eight children within a closed tennis court that we, we used. It was a safe environment and it worked very well. Again, engaging the parents or the carer within that process and many, many successful outcomes on that. Could I just quick go back to the special school one uh, to Julie, if you want to speak to me at a later time, I've got experience of working in a number of special schools, uh, not all with that age group, but certainly the uh, 16 plus. So I could probably uh, feedback to some considerations there in a bit more detail if you wished. That's, that's very kind of you, Malcolm. Um, and just going back to your presentation, I, 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 you know, I would like to say, and I know the trust to really, really um, grateful to you 
And I'm sure everyone attending today would like to say a big thanks. It's, it's a shame really on these um, Zoom calls that we can't give you a round of applause because uh, it's it's what's missing from these kind of webinars. Um, and it was uh, amazing um, experiences obviously you've had with a whole range of uh, riders, but um, it was just lovely to dig in deep to your experiences with Josh. Um, I I'm aware of how much work you've put into this presentation as well, because we've worked this week with you. Um, the, the story of Josh, I think, is 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 wonderful, and um, the the time scale you put in and the time and effort you put in is is amazing. But I think it kind of sums up what what um, the power of bikeability and um, the the core of it. I think you know you probably say is about flexibility. You mentioned flexibility throughout it. Um, so a couple of the questions that are coming in relate to this. So um, a Andrew Parsons asked over what time scale did you did this training take place? I think you mentioned yeah. it a couple of times. And, and also yeah. to, just to follow up to that is, was it fully funded by the Bikeability Grant? And I know we've touched on these, but if you could just talk a little bit more about those, that'd be great. So um, as a combination of number, the, the, certainly the time scale, and I continue to work with Josh because he's uh, now engaged as a, as a coach, and not about cycling, about learning um, uh, and, and things like that, but partially voluntary in the initial stages, privately, partially funded, SMBC, uh, partially funded, and obviously engaging in engaging him in what pro uh, projects and initiatives that we provide as a local authority. Um, but it's about, yes, it, this was quite a long and an ongoing story, but equally, I would give you um, examples of Mikey that I've mentioned, which was over four sessions, and that was local authority, as in a holiday course that we run, then some private sessions, and then back into the bikeability um, program. So it, it is a bit of both. And, and I guess it's a little bit of, you know, hopefully gives you a nice warm feed, but, but it, it's from the point of view of an instructor will know, you know, do you have that time? to devote, whether that's financial or whatever, it's about hopefully making that difference and, and they'll have to judge that. I think there's a lot of uh, support out there within other agencies and groups and things of that nature and resources that can be obtained. Um, so I hope that I sort of answered the question. Yes, if we take Josh as an example, over a time scale, quite a long time, but I'd, I'd invite people to say, look at the outcome. Certainly for his parents. Absolutely. Him. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, different different situations across the country. Um, and as Ben has mentioned, uh, the Innovation Fund um, for pilot schemes coming out at the end of November is definitely something to keep an eye on. And, we, you know, we certainly encourage you to take a close look at that. Um, so, so John followed up on a comment from Julie's, um, which was um, really in terms of making sure that a teacher and teaching assistant are familiar with the children, that they'll be on hand to help management of the group. I think that's a really useful contribution, that. And then that's something, again, that Malcolm, you certainly yeah. talked about. Um, so, Elizabeth, I think, Ben, maybe you want to talk um, about Elizabeth Leading's question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. So the question was, do you envisage training for instructors? And the the, the short answer to that is yes. Um, we are looking to um, improve uh, on the CPD that is offered to instructors and then how we at the Trust can support that better. Um, so that would be a project that um, Pat and myself will be doing um, in the in the coming weeks, um, whether it's a case of recommending um professional CPD from from other organizations uh, or developing or and uh, developing developing our own uh, online training um, and also providing sort of support for training providers to to deliver their own roles as well so there'll be a, a three-pronged approach um, and uh, yeah to, to do that and support instructors better um, into the future just just carrying on from that um, hope, hopefully that's Good news for everybody listening to that. Um, Elizabeth has said fantastic. Thank you. Um, Malcolm, did you, did you have any specific training? I, I, I don't know whether you mentioned that or not at all. Have you had any specific? Only in as much, uh, not so, I wouldn't say specific. We, we're, we're a recognised delivery centre at Solil, so we provide um, training in a whole range of things. And one of the things we are very big, Andy and I, is on the inclusivity um, 
from a point of view of knowledge, experience, and actually how you deliver. Um, certainly on the learn to ride, you know, making those reasonable adjustments, availability of bikes. Um, we've got the, the wheels for us project uh, run, runs out of Solio, but we do incorporate part of our training. And also, uh, I don't know whether my colleague um, Amber may have been online. She's uh, an independent travel trainer. So that's people who may have um, accessibility, uh, SEN issues and they how to use transport how to walk and things like that but also we're now looking to teach them how to cycle in to their you know school or the various destinations so that's independent travel training so that's something we do as well within solid Hill. fantastic great um so um, any, uh, if, if anyone has any more Sorry, Pat, I was talking over you. Um, did you want to carry on? No, no, I was saying over to okay. you, Ben. So, oh, great. Um, uh, just, yes, yeah, sorry, we've all been too polite. Um, uh, yeah, any, any more questions whilst you've got us? And of course, you can follow up with um, any of the trust team, uh, either through the contact us or through our direct emails, um, and any thoughts for the Bikeability for All team to, to, to that address as well, which has been publicised on, on the newsletters. Um, so any, any questions, uh, well, if you've got us, uh, fire them in now, um, and then we will uh, answer those um, and then, then wrap up. But I think just a comment from me really is... Um, uh, uh, what has really struck me from um, from this um, is, is is the the initial approach, the the attitude of, of okay, this this is slightly out, out of the box, but what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? Which which, which I think is um, something we would would all be really well uh, well armed with. Um, a question from. Um, uh, anonymous and attendee about British Cycling's uh, coaching rides with disability workshop. Um, worth, worthwhile uh, us working with them as uh, a joint resource we created. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely, and we do have close close relationships with uh, with the others uh, um, in the cycle uh, in the cycling space. So British Cycling, Cycling UK, Sustrans, um, and, and a few other businesses. Um, uh, so absolutely, it will be a, a, a collaborative effort looking at what's already been done. Um, it, it, does any revisiting need to happen um, to make it uh, fit for purpose now? Um, so yeah, we are we are committed to collaborative work, you know, and I hope that answers that. 